Hello everyone and welcome back. I have to be frank guys, this week's video was hard to write and even harder to do research on due to the content matter. I know that I lightly touched on the migrant crisis in Europe in my premiere video a little over a month ago, and I didn't expect to have to cover the topic again so soon, but a great deal has changed. Some for the good, but unfortunately most of it for the bad. This is going to be part one of a series about the current migrant crisis in Europe. The state of affairs in Great Britain will be uh, covered mostly in this episode, with other nations covered in subsequent parts. Migrant violence continues to dominate the reports coming in out of Europe, not in the mainstream media, but in social media and alternate news sources. While it is not a total media blackout from Europe at the moment, it's coming close to becoming one. Getting objective reports from the EU is getting more and more difficult. Voices that oppose the far-left government in power are either being stifled with hate laws, claiming racism, or denied entry into countries experiencing severe problems with Muslim, Muslim migrants. The situation in Europe has reached what I consider a make-or-break state of affairs. Britain is still within the EU, and it seems that many within its ruling class are pushing for it to stay where it is, using financial fear tactics to panic their citizenry into compliance. They still brandish the word racist against those with the common sense to question the wisdom of letting in tens of thousands of migrants from a culture that is as late alien to theirs as the Klingon Empire. I, I keep insisting that admitting these people would not be an issue if they had any intention of assimilating into their host culture. Members of the far left will argue that they shouldn't have to assimilate, that their culture and country is as valid and virtuous as ours, and to that I say, bullcrap. If their culture were as virtuous as ours, then their region of the world would not be a blazing white hot spot of violence and intolerance that it is. That's right, I said it. Countries that are predominantly Muslim have the most issues with violence. The higher population of non-assimilating or poorly educated Muslims, the higher percentage of crime and acts of violence. That isn't to say that violence is, is unique to the Islamic world, but, I mean, statistics don't lie, it is more prevalent. Before I go any further, I want to get something out of the way. When I make these statements, I do not mean every Muslim. I don't want to hear any comments in the comment section that, you know, saying that you're saying that every Muslim is a rapist or a violent person. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not a complete idiot, and I certainly do not believe that every last member of any group of human beings, regardless of their religion, are complete scum. However, you notice that I placed the qualifier non-assimilating or poorly educated in front of the word Muslim during these videos. There are Muslims that I hold in very high regard. On Twitter, I follow the Imam of Peace. Uh, I believe his name is uh, Sheikh M. Twahidi from Australia. I agree with him more often than not and believe that the culture in Europe would benefit greatly if there were a few more dozen like him there now. Unfortunately, there are not a few dozen like him. Or if there are, they are not trying hard enough to have their voices heard. The mainstream media is no longer delivering news with any semblance of non-bias in Europe. I know that in a utopian society, crime could be reported without any mention of race, religion, or social motivation. We live in what is popularly referred to as reality. When a certain group of people, united by race, religion, or ideology, openly call for the extermination of another culture, either by violence or by breeding them out of existence, one needs to tap into the instinct of self-preservation and come to a rational conclusion. For instance, in London, there has been a 20% rise in rape reports in one year. The police claim they don't understand why. Apparently, this baffles them. I'm going to call shenanigans on this. It isn't that the London police don't know what's causing the increase in rape violence. It is that they are afraid to say so. That's right. They know that the immigrants brought into their country sanctioned sex slavery. That rape and sex slavery against non-Muslims, is sanctioned by the extreme Islamic sects that are being admitted into the UK. Yeah, yeah, I understand not all Muslims. Just keeping that clear. To save face, the police have said, oh, 
That's because we have been doing our job so well that the ladies are just lining up to report their brutal rapes when they used to be afraid of doing so. Hmm, shenanigans and bullcrap once again. Evil shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. <clears throat> hey, Farva, what's the name of that restaurant you like with all the goofy shit on the walls and the mozzarella sticks? You mean shenanigans? No! Oh. You're about shenanigans, right? Put those away! I'm going to address the people of the United Kingdom now. Wake the hell up. Currently, you are placing more importance on having the appearance of a polite and accepting society than you are on protecting your own children. Your sons and daughters, those that are depending on your guiding hand, your strength and protection. Keep calm and carry on isn't going to work for this crisis. You need to get angry and do something to convince your own government, the people who you voted for, who you voted into the office, to protect your interests. The people on the television that you watch are supposed to deliver information. And instead, they are obscuring facts with name-calling and baseless allegations. If you quote the passages of the Quran that call for the murder and rape of the infidel, you are called an Islamophobe. Piers Morgan, who claims to care so much for the child victims of gun violence in America, literally ignores the plight of thousands of young British girls that are groomed and raped by orga organized Islamic gangs. Churchill you are an Islamophobe who hates Islam. No, I don't you basically Islam. think all oh, Muslims are to blame. No. We've seen you on video no. saying it. And I what haven't. you're doing now is deliberately inflammatory. It is deliberately poisonous. How is this inflammatory? And you are having I'm the giving complete you facts. opposite effect to the one that you say I'm you have. William Gladstone. You are stirring I'm up quoting. hatred. Stand you are abusing hatred. people's religion. You're abusing their faith. With and you're being a complete with... disgrace. What do you... Again, I'd like to reiterate that I do believe there is a difference between a refugee and a rape UG, okay? Not all Muslims. The whole of the BBC ignored the Telford grooming gang scandal. Hundreds, up to a thousand, young white British girls were raped, beaten, sold and rented into sla sex slavery, or murdered. Even after receiving complaints that the story was being ignored, it was reported that Asian men were at the root of the problem. Technically correct, but very, very misleading. They said Asian, but what they meant was Asian. I mean, they could have said Middle Eastern, you know, that would have given people more of a clue. But they, you know, don't want to be called Islamophobe or racist, so, you know, it's safe to call an Asian a rapist. Violence begets violence, and a Welsh man, a father of four, committed a horrendous act on a group of Muslims during Ramadan outside of a mosque. There was no hesitation showing his very white face, calling him an Islamophobe, and portraying him as a far-right nutcase, despite there being absolutely no evidence of that prior to this attack. His neighbors referred to him as calm, collected, normal, but apparently he was outraged. And, you know, his act was heinous and misguided, but if you look at the manner in which it was portrayed, why is it easier for authorities in Great Britain to grant victimhood to Muslim migrants and not to young female children? Here is a face that they chose to ignore. Here is the face of those that killed her. Here is the face of one of those Asian men who beat, raped, and killed British children. This is a face of a girl who was forcibly addicted to crack and made to sexually service several Asian men at a time and was murdered by those young pred predators. Your British children are being used as sex slaves by migrants and instead you're worrying about whether one of them accuses you of hating their skin color. Do you not see the insanity that is gripping your nation? These are not isolated or unique cases. I have dozens of examples that I could use. Here are just a few. 
Take some time to read the headlines. So what's the cause of the problem here? Ask the Mayor of London. Ask your representatives in Parliament. Stop being afraid to speak out. Stop the keep calm and carry on shtick. Get angry and question those that call you scum for questioning what is obviously a boiling over crisis. Ask yourself if you feel safer now than 15 years ago walking home at night. Ask yourself if you could walk unmolested in any part of the city. Ask yourself if you would receive justice from the people that have been elected to represent your interests. Ask yourself why they're more interested in providing for Muslim ref refugees than they are protecting children who are unable to protect them. Be assured that this is not about brown people and white people. You're not racist if my words have sparked some sort of fire in your belly. It is about fairness. It is about truth and equality. And nothing I have said has been misleading or is meant to incite violence. It is meant to spur legal action in the common man. To defend the way of life in Great Britain before the sun truly sets on the former British Empire and a crescent moon rises up above her. Make no mistake, there is an invasion taking place in Great Britain and the rest of Europe by people that would see you and everything you love either destroyed or becoming theirs. I have something interesting to show you. If you look at genocide as it was defined by the UN in 1948, you may be shocked to learn that the current gang rapes, forcible addiction, and sexual molestation of your children seem to qualify what is occurring in Great Britain at the moment as attempted genocide. Wake up, England. Wake up, Europe. You're not racist or hateful when you defend what is yours. You're dealing with a culture that has not advanced on its own since the 12th century. You're dealing with a religion that has not reformed itself, as Catholicism has, from the policies that it followed during the Crusades. It's not hateful to see reality for what it is. I'm sure many Brits and some Americans are asking, well, Vincent, you're just a yank. What do you care what happens across the pond? I care because Europe, while insane at times, is the cradle of the United States. Be it from Spain, Germany, Ireland, England, Sweden, you guys are where we came from. We need each other as allies. It is in our best interest that our allies remain strong. Now, I can't do anything about the guns. You guys let them take away your guns. And now that they've disarmed you, they're trying to smother your voice. Stand up and let your voices be heard. Protect your children. Protect your wives, your daughters, your girlfriends, your sons. It may take hard work to change things, but don't go down without a fight. Thank you, everyone, and please donate to my Patreon and keep my voice heard. God knows YouTube isn't doing me any favors in their search algorithm. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and most importantly, retweet this. I need the exposure. Sweden will be the next country in this series. I hope to have it released in the next few days. There was a slight delay with my first recording of this, so mm, sorry for the sorry for the uh, late release. I've not started to stream live yet, but it's still in the works, probably after I finish this series. Thank you for watching. Everyone have a good day.